Today's episode is about the lost art of crate digging. Let's go into a little depth about what crate digging is and a little bit of history about where it kind of came from and where it is today. So crate digging started with DJs picking out what kind of songs they wanted to play. And then after they picked their genre, they would shop for those kinds of records. So DJs were very, very dedicated to the style of music that they were playing. So because, I mean, if you're spending $20 on a record that has one song on it, you better like that song because it's going to cost you quite a bit of money. And if you're never going to play it, then it's going to be worth nothing. So DJs would have to go shopping and they would search through crates. And, and, and we'll, we'll take you through the process. Here's, here's the process of what crate digging used to involve. So this is what you'd do. You'd go through and you'd check out what kind of vinyl there was, you know, what kind of songs there were to choose from. You know, there's electronic stuff and there's uh, break records, there's Rocky, you know, a large variety of different stuff. What I would do is I would take something like here from DJ Shadow and I would go, hey, let's, uh, let's pick that one. Um, ultimate Battle Weapon, that's uh, a break record, but why not? You know, and you'd pick out stuff that you thought might be interesting. Um, something with a tree on it. I picked out, you know, say 20 songs here. Now I, after I've picked out my collection of stuff that I'm going to listen to, not necessarily going to buy, but I'm going to listen to, then I go up to the turntable and you needle drop. And this is obviously a 45. So you go there, and you go here, and it's like, okay, and then I go here, and I check out the ending, you know, in the middle, and you go through all the different parts, and you decide from that whether or not you want to listen to the whole record. The other records that you didn't necessarily uh, enjoy, you would put those back, and you would just pick out the ones that you wanted to buy. And then after you've needle dropped through many of them, you end up with maybe three that you really, really like that you end up buying. The way I would do it is make sure I had a giant selection of stuff. Uh, I didn't really know labels back in the day. Uh, I picked what looked cool and what looked cool and then I kind of needle dropped through that and picked out whether or not the song was good enough to play or not. Here's an actual record cover of people crate digging back in the day. There's a guy, he's got He's a whole like collection of records there. He's picking out for other stuff. This guy with the fuzzy face is going through all this sort of stuff. So now let's talk about the reason why it's a lost art. The reason that is is because nowadays people can just download um, music, obviously. So you can go on iTunes, you can go on Beatport, you can go wherever. You can download the top ten of uh, the week and then you can play those and you know everyone's gonna dance around at your show supposedly um, the thing is if you do that then there's probably the odds are every other DJ who's thought of that idea is gonna do exactly the same thing and they're gonna play exactly the same music that you are and you're not gonna be any different from them so if you download say like a hundred songs you're not going to know whether or not those songs are going to work appropriate for whatever set unless you go through them. So, you know, if you're very specific, then downloading them isn't so bad, uh, as long as you're making sure that you handpick every one of your songs. Unless I bought somebody's record collection, and I just I would buy people's record collections to have a huge amount of arsenal of things to choose from. So I could have talking phrases, I could have uh, little speeches, I could have like little kids records, ditties and stuff, like little goofy stuff. So here's my beef. When I'm on the internet, or on Facebook or Twitter or something like that, I always see people go, I'm planning on playing dubstep, or should I play dubstep, or should I play house and trance or hip hop, or what, you know, and they, they ask their friends what they should play. When you're a DJ, you should be picking out specifically your own genre that kind of speaks to you. If you don't feel your music, then the audience is not going to feel the music that you're playing. 
if you're uh, just throwing on whatever song that comes up next in your computer, then the audience is not going to feel the song. You also have to have a certain amount of energy level. So we used to have to figure out what the energy level of each genre was and then pick out uh, from one to three how energetic each song was so that when you planned out your set you could have a nice curve to your set. So you're going to have different shows, you're going to have different um, you know scenarios that you're going to be in and then you have to pick the genre and songs that fit that scenario the best. So that's why having a large variety to choose from is good but you need to hand pick out your large variety. You play what you think the crowd is going to enjoy but you don't stray from the kind of music that you want to DJ or you want to play to a crowd. 